as a weed connoisseur and, you know, one of the world's top weed connoisseurs. Tell us, I mean, connoisseur. Not- <laughs> there we go. Welcome to Soul Happy Hour. But no further ado, our host, Denny hey, 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 what's up, everybody? How we doing? Ah! Yes. We have an amazing show for you tonight. Guy Bill is here. Come on, make some noise. Woo! Any uh, any pop smokers in the house? Make some noise. Just one, and then Aaron Woo. with a side clap. Thank you so much, Jessica, from the heart. Hell yeah. Smoking weed is good for the heart health. That's what they say. I did read an article once that said, uh, smoking marijuana makes you more likely to have a heart attack. I'm like, that's just... All right, let's do the air horn after the joke finishes. (laughs) We'll work it out. We'll work it out. Show number two, we'll work it out. A lot of interesting things happening in the world right now, but a lot of stories that are not being covered. I don't know if you heard about this, but a gemologist in Brazil uh, opened a geode, that's a, that's a rock, and found inside of it this shape that resembled Cookie Monster. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, go Google it. It looks exactly like Cookie Monster. And it's not the first time that somebody thought they saw a Muppet on Crack Rock. <laughs> Am I right? Come on. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> As many of you know, uh, Kim Kardashian preparing to divorce Kanye West. How do we feel about that? <laughs> not, not a lot of an opinion. Oh. Okay. Yeah, she's about to divorce him. And uh, in a related story, the NBA is expected to double their rebounds. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting it. We're getting it. Um, speaking of sports, Florida has offered to host the 2021 Olympics if uh, Japan decides they don't want to. Did you guys hear about that? To which everybody's like, no, we didn't have yeah. uh, <laughs> But in, <laughs> no, in Florida's defense, it would be the last year that they can host the Olympics and not just offer water sports. So <laughs> <laughs> where are my Floridians at? My bad, but uh, get a bathing suit ready. Yeah, so uh, also speaking of Florida, the Miami Heat will start to have coronavirus sniffing dogs at their home games. Yeah, so here's how it's gonna work. Uh, they'll have the dog sniff the virus and then the dog will lose its sense of smell. <laughs> <laughs> really good news. Uh, Harriet Tubman will replace Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill. Who's excited about that? <laughs> yes, Andrew Jackson was not available for remark. Uh, <laughs> he was seen leaving the $20 bill on a trail of tears. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you could say he's been railroaded. Motherfuckers, learn some history. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest story that everybody's been talking about last few days, a group of Redditors caused hedge funds to lose billions of dollars with a Wall Street maneuver called the short squeeze. You guys heard about this, right? Yeah. I mean, we should have we seen this coming because GameStop's clientele has always been doing short squeezes in the private sector, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's a masturbation joke. <laughs> Speaking of masturbation, the court has approved $17 million to pay out Harvey Weinstein's accusers. Uh, $16 million which is going to soiled plants. <laughs> Great, fantastic story. Former Trump uh, spokesperson Sarah Huckabee Sanders is running for governor in Arkansas. <laughs> Thank you, one person. Thank you so much. If she wins to be governor of Arkansas, that just goes to show that the governor of Arkansas can come in both genders, but will always come in a blue dress. Okay, am I right? Well, well, of course, uh, of course, I'm butchering words on purpose tonight because we have a special theme for you tonight. I already asked if there's any marijuana uh, people in the house, but we have a very special guest. Uh, in honor of our guest, we've put together a little something for you. So uh, we got to take a commercial break really quick and then we'll get right back to it. Hi. Are you tired of feeling like this? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Or like this. Oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to talk to your doctor. 
<laughs> Talk to your doctor today about marijuana. It's the only remedy that you can take. You can take it daily. Or hourly. Or constantly. <laughs> Just listen to these testimonials. Hi. I used to have severe rheumatoid arthritis. But ever since I tried marijuana, I don't care. <laughs> 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 I used to have anxiety about interacting with people in public, but thanks to marijuana, I never leave my couch. <laughs> <laughs> I used to suffer from ambition and employment, not no more. Thanks, marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> marijuana is the only drug guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> Weed is marijuana. What are we? What are we? Doing? Marijuana, it's good shit. Side effects include paranoia about people watching you, chronic masturbation, going to every KO comedy show, forgetfulness, chronic masturbation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So if you're interested, talk to your next DoorDash driver to see if marijuana is right for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> Give it up for those random audience members in our show. <laughs> <laughs> Doing special things. Um, so uh, for those of you who are high, I hope you're high. And um, and uh, for those of you who just get high on life, just take a big hit of life right now. <laughs> what we're doing today, we have a special guest who is a big weed advocate, uh, also a juggler and a comedian. He's a columnist in uh, many publications, such as The Guardian, The Sacramento Bee. And he is uh, a host of many shows, including one on Netflix. I'm going to let him tell you all about it, but he's one of my favorite comedians to watch, and he's been doing shows with the KO Comedy Network since we started. Everybody welcome our special guest tonight, Ngayo Bilam! Am I doing a set, or is this like a talk show? Nope, talk show. I mean, okay. I mean, it's going to be the same jokes, but the, you know, how you, how you get them in is different. <laughs> Oh man, it's so good to see you, man. I'm so glad you're doing this. Um, oh, it's good yeah. to be invited somewhere, even if it's just my house. That's comedic timing. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. So, so yeah. So again, thank you for joining us. And and you know, a lot of people know you, but a lot of people don't know that you are also a juggler. Is that true? I, I am. I am a juggler. I was a professional juggler at uh, Pier 39 for, for a few years. I'm actually the winner of the 1994, I know some of you were born then, the 1994 <laughs> International Jugglers Association People's Choice Award. <gasps> wow. wow. That is awesome. People's Choice. <laughs> as jugglers go, I'm an excellent stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so, at what point did you actually look at your life and say, holy shit, this is real. I actually made it as a weed smoking, juggling comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was in Barcelona one time uh, after leaving a. Uh, uh, they have social clubs in Barcelona, so it's not it's weed isn't legal, but it's not illegal. It's kind of tricky, but they have clubs like local bars, and you got to sign up. You become a member, and uh, I think I was sitting in there uh, being high as fuck, and I was like, "This is not bad for a kid from Central and McAllister Street." who didn't really have a lot of money. I mean, I still don't have a lot of money, but I haven't had a lot of money in 10 different countries. <laughs> all over the place. So it's not, it's not bad at all. You know, um, I think when we got legal in California, uh, I, I kind of felt it like, you know, for the longest time as a comic and a, and a weed activist, I would just get, oh, all you do is talk about weed. We don't really need any weed comics. I'd be like, you know, I have other jokes. It's not just weed. But, but now they're like, hey, we need a weed comic. Okay. <laughs> call Doug Vincent, and then um, and then they call me after Doug says no. But still, it's <laughs> nice to be asked. Yeah, and I've raised my price. <laughs> and, and, and 
<laughs> and you argue with these lazy bitches. I just raised my price. Uh, we'd like to thank Beyonce for the inspiration. You know, as, as somebody who was smoking weed, you know, long before it was legal or even popular, what do you miss about the old Wait, days? First of all, maybe it wasn't legal, but it was popular. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had problems finding weed anywhere in the United States. Maybe not good weed. I smoked a lot of weed in Arizona and Wyoming because that's what they had on hand. And I've definitely uh, sat in a 7-Eleven parking lot for two hours waiting for some random dude to fucking show up in the middle of the night in Austin, Texas. But don't tell me that it's not popular. It just wasn't legal. <laughs> but do you still feel that kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, like culture shock when you go into a dispensary and you're like, this isn't like how I grew up, you know? Uh... You know, you, you know, a few years ago, like the first time I went to Amsterdam and walked into a coffee shop in Amsterdam in 19... I was definitely uh, like, man, this is crazy. We need, we need shit like this. And I think that, you know, the explosion of the, the medical cannabis industry in California and people would come to visit and manage to work their way into a club and they would see you walk in and there's, you know, a bunch of different weed and hash and edibles and you could pay with your fucking debit card. Right. And people would see that. They'd be like, man, we need this somewhere else. We got to go back home and, 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 and do it. And that's how you get it in California, uh, Colorado and Oregon and Washington and Illinois. And fucking, is it South Dakota just legalized weed too? Yeah. Do you ever think South Dakota would have legal weed? What? No. Yeah. South Dakota used to try to get you, like say the cops showed up and you ate all your weed brownies. They would try to get you for uh, internal possession of drugs. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, you still possess the drugs. They're just inside you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have any proof. You're not going to fucking analyze my poop for THC content. And I'm also <laughs> stripping balls Maybe right now. I just ate 100 milligrams to try to avoid this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we, so we've legal. You've been an advocate for many years. It's yes. legal in California now. So now what? What do we fight for? It's people are still in jail. It's not legal in Texas. It's not legal in Florida. It's not legal in in all these other states. It's not legal around the world. I I long for the day. Where you know how you can go get wine from France or Australia or whatever at the Bevmo? I would love to walk into the weed mo and be like, I would like a half a gram of that Moroccan hash. And I would really like some of that Tunisian hash because fucking Morocco makes great hash. And I would like to be super fancy in my pants. You know what I mean? Right? And just have crazy. We're going to have the international weed competition where the best growers from around the world show up in Jamaica or Barbados or my house and we just go hard. <laughs> And smoke all the weed. I mean, there's still lots of things to do, and there's still people in jail, and there's still people going to jail for weed. We can't have it, right? And and also one of the challenges that we're having as we turn cannabis into a commodity, which is how it's going to be. I don't necessarily think we're going to lose stoner culture, but the nature of capitalism. Capitalism loves a monopoly, right? And weed has been one of the greatest decentralized business success stories of all time. Because back in the day, you didn't want to get too big because you get too big and the feds show up and everybody goes to federal pound you in the ass prison. So, but now these guys all want to, and a lot of these guys have more money than sense and they don't have any hippies on their team. They don't have any old school stoners on their team. And so they just think they're going to show up and fucking take over and, and disrupt the market. It's, that's not how it works. The black market, is, I mean, even in states where weed is legal, except for maybe Oregon, because their prices are ridiculously cheap, but everybody else still has a thriving traditional uh, legacy market. And that's not going to go anywhere if people don't know how to act right. And also, these monopolists grow shitty weed. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right? Like, if everything is McDonald's, uh, you know, it's not going to be great. I, I, I definitely commend more microbreweries and microweederies. Yes. yes. <laughs> right? I yeah. Love the, I love the local flavors. I love to smoke Jägermeister when I'm in Southern Oregon or, or some of these nice cookies when I'm in California or some of that Kentucky bluegrass or some of that random shit. So. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to say, I definitely agree that Oregon is doing it right. I went to Oregon uh, to one of their shops and I was just shocked by how many options there were and how low the prices were. Like there was so many options, also low prices. I got anxiety, which is... <laughs> get high for it, you know? <laughs> yeah don't uh, smoke a sativa before you go to oregon weed shop <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah it takes some hits of purple uh, yeah i mean the low prices create a different problem because uh and, and it's 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 a win for the consumers of course but for the grower you know 
if you were growing uh, 50 pounds, now you got to grow 500 pounds to make the same amount of money you made last year on the same acreage that you had. That creates a challenge. But these challenges can be surmounted. The, the growing techniques get better and better every year. So I'm not, I used to be a little more upset about it, but I'm not mad about it. <laughs> but weed has also been kind of the same price for a million years, right? Like a, an eighth of weed was 50 bucks in 1993. And you can still get a good eighth of weed for 50 bucks in 2020. So it's one of the few things it's not, maybe not inflation proof, but it is resistant price pressures. Except, I mean, you could, you could spend a hundred bucks for an eighth of weed, but fucking why? Right. The only difference is now you're going to get exactly an eighth, whereas back then it depended on how shady your dealer is or not. Uh, but here's yeah. the thing, too, though, right? Like, uh, the weed shop is not going to front you a sack until payday, like the weed man will. <laughs> <laughs> right? The weed shop's not going to throw a couple extra nuts because you're a good customer, right? They don't let them do that. Exactly. Anymore, right? Yes. You, you see your weed man every three days, every once in a while, he's like, hey, man, take a couple extra nuts. I made this one fat for you because you've been coming through for me. Right? <laughs> exactly. And, and so, in some ways, that culture has changed. Now you just a bad, you don't even get the smell of the weed anymore. Right, part of the, the beauty of the culture. I used to love the deli style shop. You walk in, they open the big jar. You get, you know, don't stick your face in it, but you, you can get a good whiff. You can take a look at it, right? And now it's all in bags and shit, and you can't always tell what's good. And you have to trust your bud tender. But what if they don't smoke like you smoke? Speaking of how you smoke, I know I know people ask you this all the time, but you know, at your your first choice, or maybe like if you have like a top three or five weeds that you like strings. Uh, generally, uh, whatever I'm smoking at the time <laughs> is my favorite weed. Of yeah. Very zen. zen. Very zen. Um, I'm not really, uh, super particular. I just really like well-grown weed. I'm partial to an organic sun-grown outdoor cannabis. I prefer an outdoor strain to an indoor strain. I just think it has a, a, a little more flavor. I think sun and dirt do wonders for the flavor and the consistency of the weed, which is not to say that I haven't smoked any good indoor. I've smoked some really good indoor, um, but I do prefer a sun grown. Um, I just like, I like weed that has been grown with care. Like sometimes you smoke a bowl from some weed, you can taste the commercial pressure. You can taste like these guys, we got to turn this shit around in eight weeks and it's got to cure right away. We got to get it right into the bag because our fucking investors are on us. I prefer, you know, weed grown by hippies. Like my boy Mark at Green Shock Farms. Check him out on Instagram, Green Shock Farms. That guy, man, you hang out with that guy. He's showing you his land. He's like, I picked this spot because I really thought they would have a nice sunrise to look at when they woke up in the morning. There's classic <laughs> rock band. <laughs> Frogs. He's got other native plants around the farm. Just helping the ambiance and creating a vibe and love. You know what I mean? And you grow it, you wait till it's absolutely ready and then you cure it perfectly. And then that shit is just, mm, mm, the terpenes are on fire. That's the new thing too. It's all about the terps, man. I'm about to install my terp fridge uh, in my living room next week. I used to just keep my shit in a drawer and some jars, but now I'm, it's cold storage, baby. Uh, heat and light destroy your terpenes, and we're learning more and more that terpenes are what give you the effect you want, right? It's not just whether it's an indica or yeah. whether it's a sativa. It's all about how much pinene is in that. Because I know for me that pinene is going to give me a small panic attack, but I can alleviate that by cleaning all my shit. Right. <laughs> so whenever there's train wreck or Jack Terror around, I'm like, that smells like my kitchen is going to look fucking immaculate. As long as I don't break out oh, into a crime. That's thing. so true. I never even thought of it like that. And and the terpenes was again like a difference between a new and old thing. Like as soon as I heard that word, I called my old dealer. I was like, "Why'd you never tell me about the terpenes?" Because they're brand new. <laughs> We're just getting into it. People are just get. And the beauty of it and proof that cannabis loves us is that uh, all the terpenes generally have different aromas and different flavors. Like I said, if you smell pinene, right? If it smells like a pine tree. If it's a train wreck or a sativa or, or, or like that, then you know, at least for me, piney, pine saw, I'm going to clean some shit. But if it smells like cherries or cheese or, or skunk, it's going to have a completely different effect. And that's why it's beautiful because you can open a bag of weed and you smell it and your body will tell you like, oh, that's the shit that I like. Right? Yeah. You know, as opposed to just trying to guess from the flavor. I don't fucking right. know what wedding cake is. And then right? if you try to decide. How about failed wedding cake? How come there's not a weed called bitter divorce? <laughs> 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 because that would be a beer. It would be like a super hoppy, like a quadruple IPA. 
call it bitter divorce. It's rough, but you'll feel better when it's done. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of people watching who probably don't smoke weed, maybe never even have. If you could recommend somebody, like what they should try their first time, or if not a strain, any suggestions like on where they should do it and how they should do it. That in setting is always important. Have some snacks. Uh, if, if, it's, <laughs> if it's your first time um, and you're worried about anxiety or whatnot, maybe you have some CBD products or some CBD flour around. Um, I feel like Blue Dream is probably my favorite all-purpose strain. It's ubiquitous. It's easy to grow. It's got great flavor. People talk shit about it because it's kind of overexposed and you can get some bad versions. But if you get a really good Blue Dream and you smoke it, you're like... Man, I see what all the fuss was about when it first came out. So I like a Blue Dream. I like a good Bubble Kush, especially a pre-98 Bubble Kush. That's got a nice overall roundness of effect. Um, if you're really trying to get into, like, flavors, like, I'm a fan of, like, flavors. I really love to, like, yep. oh, is that cardamom or whatever? Whatever <laughs> the, the, the flavor is. Uh-huh. It's the hint of bitter root. Um, <laughs> so I like I like a lot of those gassies, a lot of those diesels, uh, yeah. a, a cherry punch. Uh, the, the trend last year, uh, was like fruit gases. So they would, they would grow something gassy, but cross it with something super fruity. So it'd be like cherry and gas or peaches and skunk. And it seems weird, but it would work really, really, really well. Right. Right. Tangerine. Uh, There's, um, what's the, what's the strain? Uh, uh, blueberry diesel. Yep. That I had out in Portland. A friend of mine grew it and it tasted like blueberries on the inhale and it tasted like diesel and gas on the exhale. It was just amazing. It was such a good <laughs> flavor explosion on your palate. And then it had a really nice uh, super balanced high too. This is this is making all of us want to uh, you know go off to the other side. It's you know it's it's really like the other side of what? Well, well, the other side for for the you know for people who haven't smoked wheat before to like you know taste the flavors because. You know, for the longest time, wine it was acceptable to kind of like talk about wine this way, and, and marijuana didn't have this much variety. Yeah. And then now it's now become a thing, and uh, I think those tastes are very appealing. I have a, a bit in my act, which you can see me one day when I'm back on the road, about oh, yeah. how weed has joined uh, the fancy pants drug brigade. Right? Not <laughs> you know, meth doesn't have flavor profiles. So there's not some meth head like ah. ah. Is that from Lodi? Ah. <laughs> 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 so, for those of for those of you again who have not smoked weed, you know we we do want to incorporate you into the show as well. So we're gonna play a little game right now, um, where we're gonna watch some real public service announcements that actually did air on TV, and Gaio and I are going to decide cumulatively. Uh, what we would rank them on a scale of one to ten on how accurately they portray being high. I hope this this is the one with the girl melted into her couch. (laughs) (laughs) Josh, sound. Can we start over, get sound? Or is that the whole really straight hear them. I've actually had a lot of highs like that where you can't hear what's going this on. This seems like uh, <laughs> just being a teenager as opposed to <laughs> just being a stone. <laughs> oh my God, I sent my girlfriend 27 message. I made my mom cry and I got bad grades. Yeah, sounds like puberty. <laughs> it, doesn't really, it doesn't really sound like a problem. <laughs> uh, to me, that, yeah, that seemed pretty uh pretty regular that, that 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 to me that's like i took a hit of blue dream and i'm just like having a regular day yeah so, yeah i would say three gaio uh, four okay all right 3.5 is an eighth we give it an eighth <laughs> <laughs> nice let's watch the whole thing i stole from my little sister okay that's fucked up i got straight d's I left my ex-girlfriend 27 messages last night. I made my mother cry. I let people draw on me. <laughs> I did to my friends and let them find their own way home. feel like that's really more about booze than it is about weed though yeah. right right stoners don't do that shit stoners are all hella considered come on everybody we got to get home 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll give everybody a ride. Fuck it. We're going to stop at Jack in the Box on the way. Uh, <laughs> this really seems like shit drunk people would do. Texting your ex girlfriend twenty seven fucking times. No one fucking does that. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to her. She's gonna kill my vibe. <laughs> Maybe it's for the best that we broke up, man. We both could use some freedom. I did some things. She did some things. That's really more of a stoner problem. Fucking <laughs> bitch, you didn't fucking text me back. That's that's a drunk ass. Yeah, okay. every time I was hiding, somebody even put a pen near my face. I could tell. <laughs> right away <laughs> oh also i would like to point out that when, if your friends pass out and you draw on them and stuff that's assault <laughs> and if you're drawing dicks and stuff or rubbing your dick on his face while you take a picture <laughs> that's sexual assault just for just so you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and, who, and who hasn't ditched their friends or made their mom cry when they're sober right <laughs> I mean, like I said, that's <laughs> you guys i'm going home <laughs> all right let's watch another one all right can i take your order <laughs> give me 15 oh, cheeseburgers can i take your order <laughs> can i take your number <laughs> <laughs> can i take your order <laughs> you got any eggs <laughs> can i take Man, I don't have any money. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> okay, that's funny. Man, watch out! No, no. Oh, no. Uh, I remember seeing that one, actually. That's really they bad. They did a study once. Uh, they've done a couple studies. But on this particular study, it was about getting stoned and driving, right? And so they uh, people came over, they got them high, and they took the driving test. First of all, the people who were high were actually pretty good drivers. No one was really, really that bad. And secondly, they noticed that the cats who thought they were too high to drive didn't want to take the test. Like automatically, they're like, oh, you know what, man? I should probably wait a little while. Mm -hmm. Right, as opposed to if you're like doing a drinking and driving test, you're like, fuck yeah, I've always wanted to get drunk and squirrel around a little bit. <laughs> but these guys are, so stoners don't, they're not really like that. That's all I'm saying. 100%. I mean, the, can I have your number and I forgot my money? Okay, yes. But running over a little kid, no. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a non-causal effect of cannabis. Something I was trying to get into causation and correlation in there, but yeah. So scale of one to ten, then what would you give? Two. It? Well, no, you know what? I give it a three and a half because the jokes were funny. But then the runner over the kid. <laughs> I give it a five. The, can I have your number? That that was pretty good. Up, yeah. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> Come on, we've all done it. Fucking Taco Bell would not exist. If it weren't for stoners, Jack in the Box would not have cool commercials. If it weren't for stoners, <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, that new little mini taco thing you get at the Jack in the Box where they put the fucking nacho cheese sauce on it, like I have to take a Lipitor because I'm old, but that shit's kind of fire after you smoke a few joints. <laughs> well. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the commercial literally up until the part where they hit the girl on the bike, it's 100 percent real, right? So, uh, and it's 100 percent awesome. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> except for maybe like. In 2021, we're not as obviously uh, bad at flirting, flirting, bad at flirting with the with the cute woman at the <laughs> McDonald's. Also, hey, quit hitting on your butt tenders. Yes, she's cute. Yes, she knows a lot, a lot about weed. Of course, you have a small crush on her. She's at work, dog. It's her job to be nice to you. Unless she hits on you, do not hit on her. Okay, back to your. Back Very to you. nice. Well put. That was that was a PSA in itself. Um, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Right, last it's hard. It's hard not to hit on the butt tenders, man. For How any... often, who doesn't want a cute weed smoker to hang out right. with? Absolutely. So, Sarah, what's going on here? Sarah? Sarah? <laughs> she won't answer you. <laughs> or she can't. Why not? This is the way it's been since she started smoking pot. <laughs> She's all lazy and boring and... You know, we used to have so much fun together. And now? This is what we do. <laughs> Once again, I think that that's on her level. <laughs> I, yeah, right. Like, I, you know, I have some black domino that I grew uh, this season that actually kind of does that to me. But not like that. Like, I feel like she's gone off the perks. Right. She's on that <laughs> that's really more like a lean, lean. Look, she was leaned out. As opposed to just on a good indica. Well, you can still talk. You just don't want to. 
<laughs> Maybe she did. And this was this commercial came out before Dabs, so like Dabs do do me like that. Dabs definitely make me quiet and a little telepathic. But still, then I'm still communicating oh. with my mind. I'm not just sitting there like a lump on the couch. Right. And then also, it's like if you're, you know, if the friend has better things to do, why isn't she out doing them anyways? You know. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sarah's gonna be right there. She's a, that's yeah. an old Ron Shock joke yeah. <laughs> about. There comes a point in a rug. Where you're like too fucked up to go anywhere. You're just like, man, I'm just gonna sit right here. I'm really fucked up. Everybody knows where you are. Where's Johnny? Oh, he's over there. He's fucked up. <laughs> As opposed to booze, you're like, what? I'm, as soon as I find my car keys, I'm kicking your ass and we're driving out of here. Yeah, at least the late not... great Ron Shock, everybody. Check him out. He was hilarious. Slow pace. Oh yeah, Ron Shock was amazing. And and uh, so scale of one to ten, what would you give that one? Two. Okay. I don't I'm... find it truthful at all. I'm going to give it a 2.5 um, because I feel like I was the other girl who's just bored with my friends. Uh, this, well, I guess this is before people had smartphones and the internet. So true. I mean, if you're at your friend's house and they're passed out, that's just the perfect time to <laughs> make a new TikTok video or do the silhouette challenge or whatever. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Technology and weed has gotten way better since any of these PSAs. So I'd like to see a, a more modern one. Uh, step its game up. But uh, in the meantime, we have another game we want to play with you. Uh, yeah. This one's called Bugs Bunny or Drugs Honey. <laughs> All right. Um, so to play this game, we're going to turn to our correspondent. Yes, 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 yes. How y'all doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, so as Sammy said, we are going to be playing Keith. Bugs Bunny. Wait, or- I'm sorry. Wait a minute. K-E-I-P-H? Yes. Keith. Yeah, how's it pronounced? Keith with the f- f- in nice, it. nice. So they wanted to make sure that you already like had a nickname pre-selected. It's not Keith, it's Keith. Yes, <laughs> and you're kind name. of named after a, a cannabis product as well, right? Keith is it's right. pre-hash. It's the little heads. It's the, yes. the land heads off of the weed is Keith. Yeah, and you press that a little pressure and heat, and then you get hashish. Yes, Keith. and that's I was the, when I ran a magazine. I was the editor in Keith. <laughs> and that's my actual name we're not doing that just for this show so. no and, and i'm also i'm not bad and like i i think that's awesome you're right my name is ungayo so i don't talk shit about anybody <laughs> thank you thank you for the love uh like i said y'all y'all will be playing a game called bugs bunny or drugs honey um i'll be giving you all four headlines three of which will be real life events one will be a looney tunes cartoon the audience <laughs> is at liberty to help you both. And you are granted three questions to ask me. The goal is to choose which headline is obviously the Looney Tunes headline. Uh, I warn you up front, I fucking love Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes. And I'm going to tell all you bitches. So this is like right on Saturday morning in my house. I'm just going to let you know. Leopold. Right. Leopold. That's how I'm walking in. Like, Leopold. Leopold. Watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. I got the, the first one. Man slides down three-story garbage chute to evade police, continue to continue to run away despite both feet being broken. The third one, well, I'm sorry, the second one is man runs away naked in a flurry to find his lost sesame seeds, does not successfully find them. <laughs> man. <laughs> Man survives accidentally self-inflicted shun got blast to the face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the fourth and final one, man attempts to deposit a $1 million bill. is only caught because he spelled the word million dollars or million wrong. He got caught uh, million. And I, I can repeat those for you, but... Duck season. Uh, Wabbit season. <laughs> Duck season. Well, listen. The, the question is, do you want to shoot me till you get home? He doesn't have to answer that. <laughs> shoot you now. I say he does have to shoot me now. So shoot me now. <laughs> it's clearly the man survives a shotgun blast to the face. Wow. Okay. And that's, that's, your, that's, your, that's your final answer. And Sammy, do you have a choice? I'm going to go with sesame seeds because I didn't know many people love sesame seeds as much as I do like that. Yeah. All that, right. That to me just seems like a very cartoonish thing. Okay. Uh, so I will reveal the, uh, the the accurate or the real 
headlines. The first real one is uh, the man sliding down a three-story garbage chute to evade the police. And continuing is, is that a Florida man or was it a Texas man? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good question. I'm willing to blame it on Florida. I'm to as one does. As one does. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the second real one is man attempts to deposit a $1 million bill only caught because he spelled million wrong. So the uh, the other w- real one would be man runs around naked in a flurry to find his lost sesame seed. Of course he does. It's not fun right now. So that would leave the self-inflicted gun, shotgun. Wound. And here's the thing. Sesame seeds are very small. Would you really run? Wouldn't you want to walk slowly and work the grid? Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's like a bag of sesame seeds. <laughs> And why? Like, maybe if you had smuggled some sesame seeds with a few weed seeds in it from Morocco to grow that nice hash plant where they get the delicious Moroccan hash from, see, I call it back. Then maybe you would run around naked in the front. Right. If it was poppy seeds, I would have said drugs for sure. Uh, <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so we have one more game. This game is called We Are the 12%. Thanks, Keith. Yes. Thank you. Ooh. Uh, actually, so so uh, as you may know, 12% of Americans say that they smoke pot. That's, so that we know of, right? Um, so we're going to play a game where we are given two uh, proportions, or we're given two categories, and we're trying to decide which is more than 12%, which is less, less than 12%. But I'll let Keith explain it, because Keith's going to do this one, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, welcome back, Keith. <laughs> yes, yes, I am back. Like I never left. Um, we <laughs> like are the <laughs> uh, So uh, studies have shown that 12% of the U.S. population smokes marijuana. I'm sure that that's a lie, but maybe not. And we're going to play a little bit with that statistic. Um, basically, I'm going to give you two categories. One will be above 12%, the other will be below 12%. Your goal is to decide or to which, guess which one is uh, below and which one is above. Make sense? Yep. Yes, I'm ready. All right. So first one, uh, percentage of adults considered metabolically healthy in the U.S., which includes those at risk of diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, et cetera. That study was done by the American Health and Wellness Center versus the percentage of black people in the church of Latter-day Saints. You're saying which one is 12%? Which, which one is, is above 12% and which is a below 12%? Oh, that's a tough one because Americans are notoriously unhealthy and we all have pre-diabetes uh, because look they at our diets and we love corn syrup. Metabolically unhealthy. Metabolically unhealthy? But there aren't... Here's the, the thing about the Mormon church, though. Metabolically healthy is the question. So is it is it more than 12% considered metabolically healthy or below 12% considered metabolically healthy? But so, so if we say that, that more than 12% are metabolically healthy, that means that fewer than 12% of black people, of Mormons are black. Yes. Yeah. Here's the thing. The Mormons were notoriously racist for the longest time. Yeah. Right, black people couldn't get into heaven. You could be a, you could join the priesthood as a black man, but you couldn't get into heaven when you died. And for this, you had to wear special underwear and give up coffee. So I said no when they asked me. <laughs> but they have changed the rules, and so I don't think that's that as it is uh, anymore. And also through their crazy evangelical outreach, I mean, they're not just all across the United States. They're in China. They're in Japan, and they've tried to evangelize, evangelize. The, a lot of African countries. So there are a, a few black Mormons, but I don't know if it's 12% of Mormons worldwide. I mean, I've been to Utah, but I don't think there's 12 black people in the whole state. That's not true. Salt Lake City <laughs> is actually way more diverse than I thought it would be. But um, I'm going to go with uh, 12% for the Mormons. Okay. So you think it's less than 12% of us are healthy in the U.S.? See, I got to feel like. We're we're healthier than that. I would say like twenty five percent of us are meta- metabolically healthy because there are some young people in this country. Uh, <laughs> but then, uh, and so that's fewer than twelve percent Mormons. Yeah. So I'm saying Mormons is fewer than twelve percent. Healthy people are more than twelve percent. All right. My final answer. Okay. Uh, so 
the uh, metabolically healthy people, that is above 12%, but the percentage is still shockingly It's like 12.9%. 12. 12. 12.9%. <laughs> Uh, so it's not not that good. The number, the percentage of Black people who are in the Church of Latter Day Saints is only six percent. Well, there you uh, go. Yes, yes. So uh, the next one: percentage of people who believe we didn't land on the moon in 1969 versus the percentage of the U.S. adults who cannot read. Ooh, ooh. man. Ooh. I'm going to say about 15% of adults can't read and only about 12% of people think we didn't land on the moon. Uh, I would also say that the figure of people who can read is the bigger one. No. The bigger no. one. Can't read. All right. Can't. Yeah, can't. Both of you are correct. No. Uh, there are 13% people who cannot read, uh, adults in this country who cannot read, and then only 10% of people who believe we didn't land on the moon in 1969. Mm. Yes. In uh, our last category, uh, percentage of U.S. adults who do not use the internet versus the percentage of U.S. adults who would refuse the coronavirus vaccine if offered. <laughs> there are people who don't use the internet. Yeah, Amish people. We got old people. We got old Amish people. (laughs) This is a tough one because people who use the internet too much are the ones who are refusing the vaccine, right? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Ah, I'm gonna say that more than 12% are refusing the vaccine and fewer than 12% are using the internet or not using the internet rather. Yeah, I would, I would say the same thing. All right. Well, uh, the percentage of U.S. adults who do not use the internet is 10% oh! versus 14% of U.S. adults who would refuse the coronavirus vaccine today. So I'm three for three. Yeah. You're the champion. You are the champion. <laughs> you are the champion. Leopold. Leopold. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you both for playing. Thank, Thank you, and- Keith, for having yeah. us over. Yes. And wow, that's why this game's called We Are the 12% because the pot smokers guess they know a lot of shit. They do. We have time to smoke really look it up on the internet. I'm one of yeah. those people. I will look that shit up. <laughs> All right, well, Ngayo, this has been so much fun uh, having the you pleasure here. pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much yeah. for having me yeah. over. Anything uh, anything else you would like to plug, uh, let us know coming up or any like... Uh, you know, I'm fine. doing another show on KO Comedy, uh, Black Lives Matter, or Black, Li- Black Laughs, Black Laughs Matter, on February 5th, so come check that one out. And then also I do a show at NoWorkTime.com on the 20th of the month. I haven't put that show together yet, but I'm putting it together soon, so... Uh, Follow me on the social medias, N-G-A-I-O-420, which is also my cash app and my Venmo. And my PayPal is Ngayo420 at yahoo.com. I think it's under West Coast Cannabis. You can also put in West Coast Cannabis. Uh, <laughs> if you're trying to send me money, please do. I have two young children. Well, actually, I have two children in college and uh, young to me and, uh, and, and no road gigs. So please help. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty please. And... Um, and like that. And thanks again, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. And we'll put uh, his Venmo in the chat right now. And I will say uh, those shows he does at New York Comedy Club are super fun. So check those out. And the KO Comedy one next week will be lit as well. So one more time from Gaio. Thank you so much, Gaio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And lighting up. Um, we are now uh, down to our special musical guest. You guys ready for some music? Woo-hoo. Come on, you ready for some music? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta show your hands like this, so I'm like, they are ready for some music. <laughs> uh, this next performer is awesome. I did a show with her early on in the quarantine. She has a new album out that's available on all streaming platforms called This Heartbreak. Everybody give it up for our friend Sarah Dooley! Thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to say I'm feeling so inspired by this show to like get super into weed. <laughs> I feel like 
I was like looking, I was kind of like looking around for a new hobby. I was like, maybe I'll learn a language, but like, no, I think I'm going to get like really into weed. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. You may never see me again. Um, but thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to play a song for you guys. And yeah, it's from my new album. And it would really mean a lot if you guys listened to the album. I'm really proud of it. And um, this is a song from it. And it's about the fact that I've only ever dated people who are only children. <laughs> and I am in therapy. So is anyone here an only child? Oh, I hope not. Oh, <laughs> thank God. Oh, shit. OK. Well, you know what? I'm sure you're lovely, um, which is why I haven't dated you yet. <laughs> I mean, the night is young. Um, but can you hear this piano? Yeah. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Cool. Okay, great. Uh, so basically I wrote the song about one dude I dated who sucked, but then I kind of like indicted a whole group of people. Um, but you know what? Art is reckless. <laughs> I think Kesha said that. So this is called Only Child, and I hope you like it. Never get lonely. You say you are an only child. I guess that's a no then. But I wish you could teach me how. You say you can only be lonely if you know we're not being lonely. <laughs> Where'd she go? I think we cut her off. I don't know what happened. <laughs> There's two only childs that have control. What? Sarah, we can't hear you right now. We lost your audio. <laughs> I'm laughing at Melanie in the chat. <laughs> How you got jokes? <laughs> the only child did it for sure. <laughs> Ghost of the only <laughs> Did you guys just see Aaron with his dope? <laughs> Sarah, you think it's a chord, maybe? Like a chord? Probably a chord. Come back. All right, she'll be back. Oh, we'll be back, everybody. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I like how Chris put it in the chat at the right time. Vaccine in seven months, everybody. Seven. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Well, um, that actually, that's a uh, that's her one verse song from the new album. I don't know if you get. <laughs> <laughs> Only children and only one verses. All right, Sarah's coming back. She's, we're gonna we're gonna give this another chance, guys. Uh, thank you all for being such good sports. Um, so let's see. Uh, well, hi. Hey. <laughs> Maybe my mic is high. I don't know. Um, <laughs> should I just try it again? And if it cuts yes. out, just yes. leave. Just leave. <laughs> oh. And just, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Should I like start uh, from second verse? Should we take it from the second verse? 
Yeah, yeah, we can put it. We can put them together in post. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let's just all do this again tomorrow night. How about that? <laughs> okay. So as I was saying, like, don't they an only child because they don't care about you? Um, just to like kind of get you back in to the song. Um, so here we go. But wasn't it nice when we were kissing on the train? Wasn't it nice when you were holding my hand? Or how about the morning we were singing Joni Mitchell and laughing? Didn't that feel good? Didn't that feel good? Well, now I know. Never fall for the only child. Never fall. Sarah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming back and doing the show. This was your second time with us today. I know my yeah my sophomore effort. Thank you so much. <laughs> See, somebody was saying at the beginning before we even started, like the cool thing about Zoom, like like or the cool thing about the pandemic is you have Zoom shows. The cool thing about Zoom shows, I think Kevin said, it, is that you can tell who's heckling, and also uh, that you get moments like these. You don't get moments like these in real shows, you know, where somebody's audio cuts out and they're just like. What's the problem? Like that doesn't happen. In <laughs> right. You cherish these moments because when the vaccine hits, that shit's gonna be gone. All right. So yeah, <laughs> I savored that moment. Red hands. Give it up for the glitches of Zoom contributing to our happiness in 2020. And one more hand for Sarah Dooley. <laughs> and all the staff and writers of the KO Comedy Show. Alec. <laughs> Thank you so much for attending the So Happy Hour. We're going to keep doing this uh, indefinitely, and we're going to keep having fun. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, All right. Once again, thank you. We have another show at 8 o'clock if you want to tune in and see more comedians. But until then, keep coming back, supporting, being happy, because we are to have you here. So, uh, I'll be back. Yes, yeah, now you can leave. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> thank you, Very good. Oh, yeah. Woo. Woo. <laughs>